What is up, everyone? Jacob Roach back here from the Killing Joke Studios and Mixing with Metal. I'm here today uh, to give you guys a few tips on bringing vocals to the front of your mix. Before we get started, thank you so much for uh, watching the videos, subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, commenting, all of that stuff. It's great, and I couldn't be more thankful. So make sure you keep liking the videos, you keep tuning in, and you subscribe to the channel as well. So let's get on with this. I'm going to show you just how to bring vocals that have already been processed well to the front of your mix. And I'll explain in a minute what trick I'm using to do that. So let me just play these really quick in the mix so you can hear what they sound like. Cool. So pretty upfront sound. It's good vocalist. This band is uh, Barry Odessa. I did another uh, video on this song. Uh, that you can tune in talking about the clean vocals. But um, what I'm doing here, let me just solo these vocals out so you can hear how they sound away from the mix. So they're pretty intense, and uh, that's purposeful. So uh, what's happening here? And why uh, they're kind of up front like that is this bus right here. This bus is dist PL, which means parallel distortion or distortion parallel. Uh, and I, this was just kind of a rough bus. As you can see, I don't have it actually routed in my IO. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. And what I'm doing is I'm bussing, uh, I'm bussing my vocals down, or my screams at least. I'm doing it with the cleans as well, and those have a little bit of the distortion as well. So this works for cleans or leads. Uh, maybe not in a, you know, in other tracks, it's, it works well in dense arrangements, you know, metal stuff, but not really so well in, uh, other things. Uh, so I have these busts down to a lead scream and a background scream track, and both of them are getting, uh, quite a healthy amount. Both of them are getting uh, zero DB. Uh, so just unity sent to the bus. And then I have this bus turned down a bunch. Um, so let me bring that in and out for you really quick, show you what it's doing, and then I'll show you what's going on. So it's a pretty massive difference. Um, and it's one of those things that you don't really notice works well until you do it. Uh, so what do I have going on here? I just have air distortion on here. And what air distortion is doing is uh, 12 dB boost, I guess. I mean, it's uh, not scientific here, just wherever it sounds good. 100% uh, mix. You could use absolutely any distortion and get a similar result. Uh, I just use the stock distortion inside of Pro Tools. You can use the stock distortion inside of your DAW, whatever works. The main thing here to pay attention to is you want to set the drive to taste, and then you want this high cut. Okay, and if you don't have a high cut, I'll get to that in a minute. But you want to cut the highs on them. And let me show you what that's doing. So that's about it's 6K. I'll just kind of roll it back up so you can see what's going on. It kind of gets a little gross sounding. So let me bring it down and you'll kind of see what's happening. Cool. So yeah, as you can see, that's sitting behind. Now now this this uh distortion is kind of sitting behind the vocals instead of uh, being too upfront with them. I want to bring the vocals forward. I want to accentuate the vocals. And my thought process is by by giving some some uh, body behind them, it'll push the vocals forward as opposed to just bringing something out front because it kind of gets more noticeable and a little bit more uh, distracting when you don't have that high cut engaged. Other than that, I have just a little bit of cleanup EQ on here. So I'm rolling off a ton of lows. I'm rolling off some more highs just because... Uh, if you look at the frequency spectrum,
the air distortion didn't roll off as much as I thought. And this is what I'm talking about. If you don't have a high cut, just use an EQ behind it. It's going to probably do a better job anyway. Uh, so I'm rolling off a bunch of lows, and I'm rolling off some highs, and now I'm rolling off this woofy area here in kind of the mid-range. I'll just kind of solo that area so you can hear. Just kind of woofy. Uh, and so I just wanted to roll that out. So let me bypass this EQ, and then I'll bring it back in. And... Okay, yeah, the vocals do sound fuller, maybe, um, when this is not engaged, but they sound a little too full. And in a, in a dense mix like this, I don't want this mid-range kind of, you know, blech, that kind of thing going on uh, when I have so much other stuff going on. So let me play that in context for you just to show you what's how it's cleaning it up. So just a little EQ to kind of sit that distortion better in the mix. Um, and I think it does a lot for the vocals not being too offensive. They're sitting in the mix properly while still being up front. So I'm using the distortion to push them up front, and then I'm carving that distortion with some EQ just to uh, give it, you know, give it a little bit more uh, of a slot in the mix. And if I show you these clean vocals really quick, it, I'm doing the exact same thing on the clean vocals. Actually, let me solo those for you so you can hear what uh, taking the distortion out does. What sad is the mighty? The sound is gone. The silent. So uh, it's doing a lot for the cleans as well. Uh, when you're when you're tracking a lot of guys in home studios like myself we're we're tracking through if you can see i got just a pro 40 here uh got some different inputs right now but if you look at my uh inactive inputs it just says pro 40. so i'm not tracking through high-end preamps or anything like that uh but i'm using distortion to kind of give some saturation vibe to the track so you're going to use it in different places you know um and one, the vocals is one of those one of those big places. You might use it some other places. You might, uh, you know, give a little bit on the drums. Use some different plugins, like maybe like the CLA seventy six or something like that, uh, to kind of push stuff and give it a little bit more vibe. But using this little parallel distortion trick on vocals has made a huge difference in how upfront my vocals sound. And um, yeah, it's it's real easy to set up. Just bus. Uh, a bus, like any effect send that you would use, and then distortion, and then carve it with some EQ, and then boom, you're ready to go. And then you just, what I did is I, instead of mixing it in with the send, the reason I'm not doing that is because I want, I want the same level. I don't want a weak signal hitting the distortion. So if that, if you, if you know how distortion works, you need a decent signal to hit that distortion so that it can distort. If you have a weak signal hitting it, it won't distort properly. So I'm sending Unity pre-fader, excuse me, pre-fader to the distortion so that at the same, it's hitting the distortion consistently every single time. And then I'm just turning down the distortion after that to blend that in. So just a little tip there. It's not going to be like the same as a reverb or a delay where you just send a little bit of what you want to it. You're going to have to send the full amount to the distortion, then bring down the full bus later on. And if you want, you know, if, if you want a little bit more distortion on vocals, on screams versus cleans and stuff like that, just set up two buses or automate. It'd be really easy. So yeah. That's my little tip for the day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Once again, we are going to be doing the 200 subscribers special, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and share around with your friends. I'll be doing a live Q&A where I'm just editing some sessions and answering your guys' questions. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.